Hi folks, G3 here, and welcome to another installment of my journey to go green. Today's episode is another one of my gardening updates. So this is what I've been working on over the last week or two. It might give you a little bit of inspiration, give you ideas as to what you're gonna be able to work on in the garden. You might be able to learn from some of the bits and pieces I'm doing, some of the mistakes I make. And equally, um, if you're able to, then comment down below. Let me know the things that you're working on. Uh, if you've got any advice for bits that I've been doing, whether you uh, know ways of doing it better, then please let me know, it'd be great to hear from you. First off, Good to see that the tulips that I planted recently have started coming through. So hopefully there'll be more of those pushing up. And remember I did the lasagna techniques, so there's different layers here. So there's gonna be lots that will be coming up through over time and we'll get a nice display of tulips there, hopefully. Even though they're last year's bulbs that will be um, not quite as effective this year, but hopefully we'll still get a reasonable display. And what I'm gonna be doing here is one of my raised beds. Now, last year I had onions in here and I had some peas at that end. So I'm operating a rotational system with the beds. So going around in this rotation, and the idea behind that is it means that you're not growing the same crops in the same bed for, well, in this case, I do it on a three yearly cycle because that's all the space I've got for these three raised beds. The idea behind this is that certain crops you shouldn't grow in the same place year after year. For example, things like onions and garlics. Now, this is because you could be having soil-borne diseases that will continue year after year. But if, if you go and move those around, you lessen the issues with those. The crops I had here, here, I'm going to be moving into the raised bed there. The crops that were in this raised bed over on that side are going to be coming into here this year. So it's going to be things like um, the carrots, the spring onions, uh, beetroot, that kind of thing that I'd grown there, I'll be moving on. It's time to remove these old crops here. This is fennel that I grew last year. I had loads of excess. We didn't get to use it. Um, so it's gone woody and, and that's beyond its best. I've also got some crop here that I, I planted as a, um, what we call as a, um, a green manure. It's something that I planted in the bed to um, keep the soil going over winter. So it helps the integrity of the soil by growing a crop in there. It stops leaching, it keeps the nutrients in here. Now in theory, I probably should have turned these over into the soil by now so they could break down naturally. Um, I haven't got around to it because the weather was grotty and, and all of that. So I'm gonna be putting these on the compost bin. I'll be putting some uh, additional compost in here to help top it up to, uh, to keep the nutrients in there. And then I'm gonna get this bed basically ready so that I can start sowing in some things like carrots and spring onions because the weather is getting better. We are due a cold week ahead, but um, if I can prepare the bed ready for sowing things in, then, then that'd be great. So um, that's the first task. Um, I've also, I've gone and stored my, um, my cold frame in here over winter so that um, it was out of the, the elements. So I'm gonna remove that as well and basically clear this bed. So that's the first task. Got my trowel and my fork. As I mentioned before, you don't need expensive equipment to be doing this kind of thing. It's the sort of thing you can pick up easily at a, a boot fair or free cycle, something like that. You don't need any great tools for this, to be honest. My soil is fairly, um, fairly fine here, so I should be okay just using the fork, occasionally the, um, the trowel, and it's a case of just lifting them up out. So I'm, I'm pivoting under the, uh, under the weeds and just removing those out. This probably shouldn't take too long to do. And it's always a very satisfying job because it's very easy to then to look at the progress you've made when you see the, uh, the nice tidy bed. I have uh, this fencing around just to um, keep animals off, so the foxes and the badgers, to discourage them from coming on doesn't always work but uh, at least it's a discouragement. Now I bought these frames previously to be able to put mesh over to protect crops from things like butterflies and, and the like coming in. I don't often put those on in, in all honesty because I found that I was fighting a bit of a losing battle when it came to stopping um, butterflies laying their eggs and getting caterpillars on my brassicas and the like. Uh, year after year I was having problems with it and, and I've kind of given up growing brassicas now because um, it was just a bit of a losing battle for me personally and all of these bits I'm removing they'll just go onto the compost bin if you haven't got one 
then I thoroughly recommend it, get a bit of um, space. You can always get a, a Dalek style um, if you don't have a huge amount of space to go and put in your, your own. But it's easy enough to build as I have done with a bit of, uh, a bit of wood to make a bit of a frame for it. I will need to rebuild mine at some point because it started deteriorating, the ground's been shifting behind it, so I need to do something a little bit more permanent. And the idea behind the compost bin, if, if possible, is to have it um, on open soil so that you're allowing um, worms and other creatures to come up into it and, and they'll gradually break the, uh, break the thing down. It works by the, the heat being raised in the middle because of the um, decomposing that's going on and that helps break things down and it gets uh, it gets quite toasty in there um, but it does benefit from being able to turn the um, the compost bins and that helps speed up the process of it breaking down if you've got a Dalek style bin it's not quite as as easy as an, an open style compost bin because it, it's more difficult to turn it I have got a corkscrew um, style tool that you can put in and twist around and that will help you sort of move the compost in the Dalek bin but it, it's not quite so easy. With the open bins I'm, I'm able to sort of turn it over into the next adjacent bin and that helps turn the, co the uh, material over and it gives um, it more of an opportunity to, to be broken down rather than it just sitting there stagnant. There we go, that didn't take long. I've gone and cleaned out the major bits and pieces so all the weeds are out of there. Um, I've got quite a few bucket loads that I've gone and put on the compost bin. You see that's getting quite full now, but this will break down fairly quickly. The stuff at the bottom will degrade and then this stuff at the top, that will come down and it'll be um, gradually sink down. And over time, I'll move that into the next bin um, alongside it when that bin gets empty so then I can move it in. And what I'm gonna do here is put on top some of my own compost from that material. So this is what it looks like at the moment. And you can see that there's quite a few sort of lumps and bumps in there bits of wood and everything that I need to get out. So I sieve that out. That takes a little while to do, so it's gonna take me a moment to, to actually get this topped up. And once done, I'll sort of uh, mix it in, rake it over, and I'll get the level up a little bit higher. And then that bin will be, um, that'll be completed then and ready for, uh, for sewing. So uh, another good job jobbed. Another one of the tasks I've got this week, it's not an outdoor gardening activity, but it's an indoor gardening activity. I've covered before that I use a hydroponic system to get some additional salad crops throughout the year. I'll include a link up here to where I take you through how I've used a hydroponic system. It has got to the stage where I now need to reset the crops that I'm growing in there. So I'm gonna start sowing the seeds initially before I then transplant them into their final location, which will be in here with the growing light that helps uh, bring them on nicely so they've got different spectrums of, of light and under here I'm not sure you can see that but it's it's the red and white light But what I'm doing at the moment I'm soaking some plugs in here and they are going to sit in this tray Soak the water up and I'm going to put the seeds on top in about a week's time They should have a couple of leaves on them Hopefully they should be ready to transplant Hopefully in about a week's time into their final position and that uses an inert material in the pots with these plugs in there so that the plants will put their roots down and draw the water and nutrients up from below. They don't get anything from the growing medium at all. That is just an inert material. Uh, but you'll see that if you look at the, um, the video that I produced before. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna be placing these on here and putting the seeds on top and allowing those to, to grow. I've got a range of seeds that I'm going to be um, using. I have got some old ones that I originally got with a set, but these are several years old now, so they won't be um, viable, unfortunately. I might try one or two of them out. I'm not sure because I've got enough variety here in regular salad crops. So I've got things like watercress, oriental salad, uh, red vein sorrel, rocket, that kind of thing. So those are probably going to be the primary ones that I'll put. I've got eight growing positions um, to finish up with. So I'm going to do 16 plugs so that I can have two plugs in each of the, the finished growing positions to get a nice variety of uh, seeds and, and give them the opportunity to germinate and grow. So I'm gonna get on with that now. Right, now to get the seeds on here. 
watercress is definitely a good one. That worked well last time. Obviously this is quite a trailing one, the watercress, and there are loads of seeds here. Oh, they're tiny. I can afford to be generous with these to make sure that they take because I have a lot of seeds and they're only going to be going in here so um, I, I can be generous with it. Red veined sorrel. This is really nice this one. Now these are last year's seeds but they are in theory viable until 2023 so hopefully I should be able to get a crop out of these. Super hardy winter salad leaf mix. And again, this is viable until 2023. This just gives us such a lovely selection of salad crops and they keep on growing for such a long time. We just keep cropping it, cutting off what we need. We just keep on getting it throughout the season. It's just a really good way of getting fresh salad crops for our meals and uh, you know, never having to buy leafy salad during the, during the year. Rocket. These are some of uh, Mr. Fothergill's seeds that I bought this season. So they definitely are nice and fresh. This is the Oriental salad. Right, lemon basil. Right, now I need to make a decision between these other packs. Now these are, I say, exceptionally old, I think. I can't imagine any of them really taking. They had some nice leaves in them. They're just the viability goes down over time. So I think I'm probably better off going with the ones that are ending this year. They will still germinate to a degree. And if I put enough seeds on, we should be okay. And on Dave. Excellent for mixed salads. And this is the final selection to go on. Again, because they're old seeds, I'll be generous in the hope that we get a reasonable amount that to do germinate. They're done, and I'm gonna be ruthless with these old seeds that I got from Ikea when I first bought this set. They're, they're very, very old, so those can go. Right, so that's it on those being sown, and it's just a case of popping this over and leaving the light on for 16 hours a day. The water in there was uh, lukewarm rather than chilled, and we'll monitor that and see how those go. And say in about a week's time, I should have two leaves hopefully on some of these when they've grown and then I'll transplant them over to the final position and I'll cover that in a future episode. Another one of the weekly activities I have is trying to prune all the lavender here. I haven't done it over winter. I've left it just so that, you know, it, it's there for insects if they need it for, for cover. But now that it's starting to grow, I need to cut off all of the old flowering and uh, also perhaps trim a bit back if it's coming a little bit too much onto the, the path. It's starting to get a bit woody and, and leggy in there. So I might have to look at getting some cuttings and replacing these at some point because it's becoming a bit too big and bushy. But for the time being, all I'm gonna be doing is cutting this back. And all I'm gonna do is take it back just above the leaves and trim off the dead lavender heads. And that's all I'm gonna do all the way up here. It'll soon start to look a little bit tidier because it was looking really untidy. But that is the nature of leaving it for the wildlife. It's gonna look a little bit messy initially, but now that um, insects are gonna be at, back out and about, it's warming up. So they're gonna be out and foraging and like, so I can get rid of this now. One thing that is really obvious from giving the lavender a haircut is that it is very leggy, very woody. So I think this will be the last season for most of these plants being in. They don't last forever because they, so they start getting very woody. You see that down below in here, there's just lots of wood. There's not a lot of um, plant there. So it's really kind of, yeah, this is really obvious here, you can see there, it's really obvious here. You can see just how much wood there is in there. So it's gonna be easiest if I just take cuttings of these plants and then grow them on and replace these. I'll take them out for next year and I'll replace them with 
uh, younger plants that will um, will take their time to, to get up to this size. I think I've had these in for four or five years probably, so they've done well there, but they're starting to look quite, um, quite unkempt. Right, now before I move on to just finish that off, I've also got this buddleia here, which needs to be pruned down for the health of the plant. It's not a buddleia globosa that I used to have here. This is a buddleia davidii, and it will fare best if you give it some hard pruning at this time of year and take it right down. And, and then you'll get a much better plant growing up. It was very straggly and you've got the old flowers on here. So I'm gonna take this right down. Now I checked out the, uh, the Gardener's World website and the advice they were giving was to remove sort of the top half of the growth to make it easier for you to see what you're doing. So that's just what I'm doing here. I'm just taking out some of the top growth just to make life easier. Now they recommend taking it back to about five or six main branches and about 30 centimeters from the bottom. Buddley is really vigorous, so you can't be too harsh with it. It will regrow quite well. Certainly this, um, this Buddley of Davida. Uh, and what they're recommending is taking out sort of crossing branches, just making it a lot area. And I can see I've got quite a few coming up from here. So I'm just really gonna sort of take it right out of the middle uh, and, uh, and see what I can do there. And what they say is that you should cut just above a bud if you can. And what I'm doing with this one here is I'm gonna remove it right down to the bottom because this is excess. So I'm just gonna cut that right down there and remove that one out, create a bit of, uh, create a bit more space. And so we've got this main branch here and I'll take out this crossing one there. And I'm gonna cut just above this, uh, just above this leaf node here. There we go, that's one and then take out some of these lower branches here. And I'm gonna repeat that process. So take out all this dead straggly stuff down here. And you're seeing we're starting to get a little bit more open around here. So we've got some branches coming right up in the middle that just, they're not really helping. It's very crowded so uh, and crossing. So I'm gonna take those out. I've not done this since the plant has been in, um, so it's run a bit riot since it's been put in here. So it's not such a bad thing to give it a bit of a tidy up at this time of year. Right, to keep it nice and airy in the middle, I'm gonna take that out and take that one back there. This looks to be excess. That one can come out. And then this is a nice big stem, but I'm gonna take it back to about here there we go. This one, it's a main branch coming up through, but I don't have any leaf nodes down this area. So I'm going to take it back quite hard. To there. One, two, three, four, five. So I've got five coming up there. And there's a lot more air getting into this now. I think it's gonna be a lot healthier and we should see some great growth on that this year. Be interesting to see how that goes. What that means now is I've got a bit more access up here. This is really encroaching now on the other areas and, and folding down. So I'm gonna take out quite a bit of this straight back just to create a bit of space. This, um, this lavender is just getting a bit too thuggy at the moment. So there we go, folks. That's what I've been working on in the garden over the last couple of weeks. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Please leave your comments down below. Let me know what you've been up to, whether you found this useful, whether you're doing things slightly differently to me. Let me know how you're getting on with those. I'd love to hear from you. If you haven't done so already, then why not connect on Facebook? Join the Guy Goes Green group and chat with me about what you're doing to make your life a little bit greener, the little steps that you're taking, and maybe you can give me some inspiration from that. And I'd love to answer your questions if you want to know about anything that I've been doing. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button down below 
And if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Until next time, bye.